We have a special breaking news report as we continue following a developing story this morning. Police have confirmed a shooting at Bridgewater Plaza at Smith Mountain Lake. It happened shortly before 7 this morning. WDBJ7 General Manager Jeff Marks confirms that two members of its team died in this incident. Reporter 24 year old Allison Parker and 27 year old photographer Adam Ward both were killed. Our thoughts and prayers with our colleagues at WDBJ7. Here's what we know about this incident. There is a heavy police presence in the area on Booker T. Washington Highway and in the water at Smith Mountain Lake. The shooter is still being looked for. We are waiting to learn more from police about his description and a possible motive. The Bedford County Superintendent's Office tells us schools are on a perimeter lockdown. Some Franklin County schools also on lockdown right now. Route 122 in both directions is closed through this area. Of course, we continue to follow this breaking news story on air and online at WSLS.com. And again, two members of the Roanoke Broadcasting Community have died. WDBJ7 reporter Allison Parker and photographer Adam Ward. The general manager explained today what happened and more about the loss. We want to play you exactly what they said this morning. I cannot tell you how much they were loved, Allison and Adam, by the WDBJ7 team. Our thoughts and prayers are with everyone at WDBJ7 along with Allison and Adam's family. Jade, you worked the same shift. I did. You ran into these two a lot and worked with them. Whenever there was breaking news, we would all be at the same spot. And I can tell you guys, these two were amazing people. Allison, as they mentioned, very professional, always happy. She was great at doing her job, was preparing in between live shots. Just excited to be in front of the camera. I could tell she loved television. And Adam, such a nice guy. He always had a positive attitude, always said hi to me. He'd help me out if I needed to. One thing we always talked about when we were out on shoots was about sports. He was an avid sports fan, loved Virginia Tech football. So I know he was also really excited about his upcoming wedding. So just very sad to hear this. Um, very, very tough. They were both great people. These are the photographs of the suspected shooter that we are just receiving in from police just moments ago. Police say you can see the suspect holding a gun there. And we are getting these images also on our website. They are asking everyone to stay away from the area. And if you know anything about this incident or you recognize the person in that photo, please call police immediately. 10 at noon. Oh, we continue to follow a breaking news story here at noon after a shooting at Bridgewater Plaza in Smith Mountain Lake. Police say the suspect was confronted by police on Interstate 66 and has shot himself. There's no word on his condition. Good afternoon to you. I'm Patrick McKee. I'm Jenna Zibton. The shooting happened shortly before 7 this morning. Two members of the WDBJ7 team were killed. 24-year-old reporter Allison Parker and 27-year-old photographer Adam Ward were both killed. Our thoughts and prayers with our colleagues at WDBJ7 this afternoon. The Smith Mountain Lake Chamber of Commerce Executive Director Vicki Gardner was injured. Just into our newsroom reports that the suspected shooter Vester Flanagan, also known by his on-air name as Bryce Williams, has shot and killed himself. He used to work at WDBJ. This is a live look at Interstate 66 near mile marker 17, where the encounter between Flanagan and police is reported to have taken place. You can certainly see no cars getting through there. It's not the camera's not pointed toward where this incident's happened, but certainly you see that there's no traffic being coming that is coming through this area on Interstate 66 in Fauquier County in the northern part of the Commonwealth. Within the last hour, Flan within the last hour, Flanagan tweeted from his pers from his professional account posting a video and saying, quoting, I filmed the shooting and then giving personal reasons about personal conflicts with the two victims that were involved today. That account has since been suspended. But we do want to continue our breaking news coverage now and bring in WSLS 10's Ananda Rochita. Ananda, bring us up to date with the latest. You know, it's actually just been a very emotional day here. And like you mentioned, investigators identified the shooting as Vester Flanagan, also known as Bryce Williams, a former employee at Channel 7. Now, according to law enforcement sources, they say he shot and killed himself in Fauquier County. Now, right now, we're about four miles away from where the shooting happened. Uh, Franklin County Sheriff's Office is asking us to stay here throughout the investigation. Now, going back to what happened earlier this morning, according to the Sheriff's Office, the shooting happened right before 7 at Bridgewater Plaza during WDBJ7's live shot covering 
Smith Mountain Lake's 50th anniversary. Reporter Allison Parker was interviewing Smith Mountain Lake Regional Chamber of Commerce Vicki Gardner when the attack happened. Both Parker and her photographer Adam Ward were killed. Now Gardner is still in surgery at Roanoke Memorial Hospital. Now again, investigators haven't released too much information at this point here in Franklin County. We're expected to hear more at a news conference at 1 o'clock. In Franklin County, Ananda Rochita, WSL West 10. Okay, thank you so much, Ananda. We'll continue to check in there for updates. Vicki Gardner hurt in the shooting as well. She is the executive director at Smith Mountain Lake Chamber of Commerce. She was being interviewed about Smith Mountain Lake's 50th anniversary, which is coming up next year, just before 645 when the shooting happened. She was taken into surgery at Roanoke Memorial Hospital this morning. Team coverage now with Duke Carter, who has been talking with members of the Chamber of Commerce. Duke, I can imagine a difficult day there. What are they saying today? It, it is a difficult day for people with the members of the Chamber of Commerce, but details are still limited into Vicki Gardner's condition. I spoke to Roanoke Memorial Hospital workers, and they say that Gardner is currently in surgery after she was shot in the back. And again, we're still waiting to get details on, again, Gardner's condition. Governor Terry McAuliffe sent his sympathies earlier this morning, saying that he is heartbroken over senseless, senseless murders today in Smith Mountain Lake. There's just no reason that this should have happened, and I, and I can tell you I've been a broadcaster for... 35 years now and only two other times that I have felt what I'm feeling right now in my heart was uh, September 11th and Virginia Tech um, and you know those were much greater numbers of deaths uh, but this hits so close to home it's it's so scary it really is Good afternoon, everyone. We are continuing to follow breaking news this afternoon after two members of the Roanoke broadcasting community were killed this morning on the job. A reporter and photographer for WDBJ7 were killed while reporting live in Franklin County before 7 a.m. Vicki Gardner from the Smith Mountain Lake Chamber of Commerce was hurt in the shooting. About an hour ago, we learned the suspected gunman in the attack shot himself. It happened on Interstate 66 in Fauquier County. Local, state, and federal police have been in pursuit uh, all morning. Uh, he then led officers on a chase uh, before running off the road and crashing. Once investigators approached the vehicle, they saw that he had shot himself. Now, the suspect has been identified as Vester Flanagan. We are about to see a live news conference. First and foremost, um, at approximately 1.30 p.m. today, the suspect uh, up from this incident, this shooting, died at Fairfax and Nova Hospital in Northern Virginia as a result of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. I spoke with the general manager for uh, Channel 7, Jeff Marks, did an interview with him, and he was talking about really how hard today is the balance between getting the facts, reporting the facts, because people are turning to them for the information, and then also at the same time, just having the staff come together and grieve. They're, you know, typing out scripts and then hugging and crying and that type of thing, and just really the difficulties of today. We are actually, right. uh, the, the, the material that we're we're gathering today from local communities uh, who, who knew Allison and Adam and who know Vicki. Um, we're sharing that with Channel 7 so they can share it with their viewers because they weren't able to go out and get it because we, we all do feel uh, at this time not as competitors but as colleagues in the media. Absolutely. We begin our team coverage tonight with Ananda Rochita at Smith Mountain Lake where the shooting happened. So Ananda, have investigators mentioned any motive at this point? The Franklin County Sheriff says that's something they're still figuring out. Meanwhile, heavy police presence still out here by Bridgewater Marina where the incident took place and the WDBJ-7 truck remains. Vester Flanagan led officers more than 200 miles before they caught up with him from Smith Mountain Lake all the way up Interstate 66 into Fauquier County. Police here in Roanoke found this car belonging to Flanagan parked at the Roanoke Blacksburg Regional Airport. And according to investigators, Flanagan drove the gray Mustang to the airport after the shooting and then switched over to a rental car that he had reserved over a month ago. Investigators say the rental car was the one he was driving during the police pursuit. Police have impounded the Mustang and they're processing it for evidence. Don Jeffries joins us live now. She's in Northern Virginia where that chase came to an end. So Don, officers there saw the end of this whole ordeal. What are they telling you now? 
They did indeed, John, as you mentioned. This is basically where it came to an end. Just on the other side of this wooded area is Interstate 66, and that's where state police tell us that Vester Flanagan wrecked his vehicle. Here's what led up to that. A state trooper, her name is Pam Neff. She was on Interstate 81 at the 66 exit ramp. I'm very familiar with this area. I have family about 20 miles up the road. This exit ramp is about 18 miles from us. Now, Trooper Neff had just entered the latest description of the vehicle. Police put a B on the lookout for into her tag reader. Keep in mind, they had been getting a number of different vehicles sending out information to different law enforcement throughout the morning. She put that last information into that tag reader. Now, the tag reader is a device that scans license plates as they go by, sort of like in the grocery store when it scans your items. The tag Tag reader scans the license plates and take a listen to what she says happened next. As soon as it was entered, it did come up with a positive hit that that vehicle just passed me less than three minutes earlier. I let my dispatch know that that vehicle has passed me and I attempted to catch up to the vehicle which was traveling eastbound on 66. And how fast his speeds were? He was not going that fast. He was not going above the posted speed limit. I waited until I had several other troopers with me to initiate a traffic stop. The suspect vehicle did not stop. Eventually, he did wreck the vehicle on the left-hand side of the road. Exit my vehicle with several other troopers, and we approached the vehicle. Just a gentleman that appeared to be suffering from a self-inflicted self gunshot wound. As the investigation unfolds, WDBJ7 employees are grieving the loss of their co-workers. General Manager Jeff Mark says all day the staff is alternated between doing their jobs and stopping to simply hug and cry. Outside the station, members of the community have dropped off flowers and balloons in memory of Allison and Adam. WSLS 10 reporter Christina Craig met with Parker's former role models and her mother, Barbara Bailey Parker. Today, all obviously are left with emptiness and unanswered questions. I still see the little girl in her, um, the smile, uh, the beauty, um, the confidence all radiating from her. So uh, yes, I, I did see that little girl still, even in the grown woman that was doing phenomenal things. It was a gut-wrenching morning for Paulette Symington, Allison Parker's former elementary school principal, and for loyal viewers. Um, I heard the shots, I heard the scream, and I was taken aback. Um, I got up from my chair and I told my husband, I think I just witnessed something happening. Many people in Southwest Virginia are remembering photographer Adam Ward tonight. Those who knew Adam say he had that special ability to light up a room whenever he went in it. WSLS 10's Bethany Teague spoke with several people at Salem High School today where Adam graduated. If there's one thing that Adam Ward will be remembered for here in the Salem community, it's his smile. Teachers, principals, and coaches are in shock today as they reflect back on their time with Adam. He played tennis and football here at Salem High School and was a part of the 2005 Spartan Football State Championship team. Those who knew Adam best say his life was never once about himself. Instead, he always put others first. Given his strong work ethic, Adam's choice to become a journalist came as no surprise to those who watched him grow into a man. And people are praying for the victims. Balloons, flowers, and other symbols of sadness continue to pile up at vigils across Southwest Virginia. WSLS 10's Bree Jackson continues our coverage of this tragedy and is live outside of WDBJ7. So, Bree, this has hit too close to home for many. It's a tough day for many people. This tragedy has affected our entire community. People I spoke with today say they watched Allison and Adam cover the news every morning. And tonight they're paying tribute to those two young lives lost. First, it's just belief, really, that it could happen. And it really hit home for me that this happened in our community. You don't expect something like this to happen. Devastated, it's how mourners describe their feelings as they gathered in front of WDBJ to show their respect to Allison Parker and Adam Ward. 
Many say the morning show team brightened their day. She was always so happy and positive and just, it was a great way to wake up. I know we weren't close to those two, but they felt like family. Police say the two were gunned down by a former station employee who later killed himself. As investigators look for a motive to this crime, the community prayed for understanding. At a time like this, you know, you don't know what to say. Um, and that's okay. It's okay to not be okay. Others wrote heartfelt condolences, sending blessings and love. Many are relying on faith for comfort during this tragic time. Sometimes, you know, you, you don't know what to do. Um, so you pray and, and you, you're there. And that's what we're doing tonight. We're just being there. We come together in situations like this and we comfort each other and we pray for each other. And the vigil here and the memorial here in front of the WDBJ studio continues to grow. You can see flowers, balloons, candles. One of the flower pots there says Allison, God's beautiful angel. A lot of heartfelt condolences being left here tonight. Now, we're told that vigils are planned throughout the week. Uh, we're hearing that another one's going to happen on Friday here in front of WDBJ as well as at Thrasher Park. We'll continue to keep our viewers updated as more information becomes available on where they can come together to grieve. In Roanoke, Bree Jackson, WSLS 10. All right, thank you, Bree. People are showing their support for Allison Parker, Adam Ward, and Vicki Gardner in Bedford County as well. Oh. The community gathered at Reality Ministries International, a church in the town of Bedford, and sang hymns. They also lit candles, had a moment of silence, and prayed for all involved in the shooting. People who attended the vigil say they want to show their support in any way they can. The people are very sad, and which they should be, and we just we just don't want them to. We don't want the families of Allison and Adam to not think that we're thinking about them. Community members are hoping all families involved will find peace during this rough time. Also tonight, a Franklin County church comes together to remember the victims. This vigil took place in the parking lot of Westlake Cinema, four miles away from where the incident happened. Several dozen people sang songs, lit candles, and prayed for Alice and Adam and Vicki Gardner, who, as we said, is recovering from her injuries. We lost two young people today in the prime of their life. And I mean, you know, it happens all the time and you see it. You know, we watch the news and we see it all over the country, but when it happens next to you, it just brings on a different feel. Caldwell said that he felt compelled to hold this vigil as a way for the entire community to grieve. The community support has helped WDBJ and others deal with the tragedy. Earlier, Allison and Adam's co-workers shared their memories and thoughts about their late friends. Channel 7's general manager, along with a makeshift memorial outside the studios, inside, the staff came together this afternoon to pray and lean on one another. How do you know? How do you know that something like this is going to happen? You know, you use all the news cliches, senseless, and, and all those words. What does it mean? It, it, uh, it is senseless, obviously, and, uh, and it'll take a long time to explain. Mark says he's been in this business for 42 years, and he has prayed an event like this would never happen. Well, WDBJ anchor Chris Hurst feels today's loss deeply and perhaps with more reason that you at home may have known. He and Allison Parker were in a relationship and says they even had plans to marry. He opens up about Allison and her love for her job. This photo album Allison gave to Chris as a special gift after six months of dating is mostly empty. In the front are pictures of moments the couple shared together, but in the back are empty pages they hope to fill for years to come. Uh, you never want to get into an office romance because it can be a little difficult to navigate, but she was so worth it because the way she would look at me, you know, you can, when you, when you know someone loves you, there's a look in their eyes that, that looks through you and into you, and, and she gave that to me every single day. Chris got the call early this morning to come into work. His beloved girlfriend had been shot. Morning News anchor Kimberly McBroom watched the tragic events at Bridgewater Plaza unfold from the studio. First thing I was thinking, maybe a car backfired. You know, there's a lot of traffic. It's, you know, busy entertainment complex, you know, the lake. A car backfired. Uh, something, I thought maybe something happened with his camera. Maybe a light had blown or something. Anything but this. 
While co-workers were unsure of what was evolving, they could hear screams through the camera's live feed. We got off the air and, you know, it was a live shot and his camera was still rolling and it was still, we were still getting sounds. Um, we could hear the police saying, you know, three down. Three down, two dead. Allison and Adam taken too soon. Everybody in TV news talks about what would happen if, if the worst could possibly happen, and I can say with certainty that this is the worst thing that could possibly happen to anybody in this job.